Good Friday morning, everyone. We made it through another week. I am Jen Bordeaux, and this is another segment of Family Law Uncorked. Today is June the 12th. Just as a reminder, we've made it halfway through to June. <laughs> um, and today I'm joined by a very special guest, very near and dear to my heart and those of us at New Direction Family Law and the community at large, I would, I would venture out to say, um, Mr. Marcus Harris with the Marcus Harris Foundation. And um, the Marcus Harris Foundation, we've known each other, what, Marcus, for, I guess, a year, a little over a year or so now? It's about a year. Yeah. Um, and you guys have done such amazing work in the community. And we were talking a little bit before we went live, and that's been expanding. And so I can't wait to talk about all of that. But um, so if I can, Marcus, if I could just ask you to introduce yourself and tell us about the Marcus Harris Foundation, how it got started, why it got started, and um, just whatever else you'd like to say. Okay. My name is Marcus Harris. I'm a poet, author, and playwright. And in 2018, I started the Marcus Harris Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization based in Durham. But we have a variety of different programs and services designed to help families from underprivileged backgrounds or kids or teachers who uh, need help with various things. And so we have been steadily growing in the last couple of years where we got some pretty big expansion plans starting with this fall, which I'll talk about a little bit later. What inspired me to start the foundation was I've always been involved in a variety of different causes. I've volunteered for a long time with different organizations, working in areas like domestic violence advocacy, uh, food insecurity. I've served as a mentor for kids, um, big brother programs. But as I got to be a father and my familial obligations got to be higher, I didn't have the same kind of free time I used to. But I, I don't didn't understand why. <laughs> So I didn't want to stop having a positive impact in the community. So uh, a friend of mine actually suggested a couple of years ago to start a, a nonprofit. And then that way we could create programs and services that would allow us to have a positive impact without me physically having to be present. So that's how the foundation got started. Awesome. And um, it, the foundation is, how old are you guys now? Because I think when we first met, you guys are maybe a year and a half. So are you a little over two years old now? Yeah, we launched in March of 2018, so a little over two. That's awesome. And, and you know, we're, we're going to get into exactly what you guys do and then how that has grown. And with that, I will start with um, we how we found out about the Marcus Harris Foundation, which goes to show you that blast emails, I mean, they work. You never know whenever you reach out how who you're going to connect with or who, where that email is going to land. So, um, I, and I just love this story of how we got connected. So we got an, an email that came to our general um, inbox at the, at the office, and it was about the Cuts for Kids program. And we happened to have one, one male in our office full of females, and he has, as you know, a great beard and this amazing quaff of hair. <laughs> <laughs> and one of our... Um, you know, goals and, and values at New Direction is to give back to the community that supports us. And so we charged every attorney and myself in the office of, you know, finding an organization that was near and dear to our hearts and supporting it in whatever way that we could. And so Chris hadn't been with us for too long, attorney Chris Hicks, he hadn't been with the firm for too long. Um, and this came across my email and I was like, this is a great program and it's cuts for kids. So it's dealing, we'll, we'll talk about the specifics here in a moment, but it's dealing with, you know, haircuts and self image. And, um, and I was like, well, what better person to pitch this to as far as possibility, you know, finding out more information than Chris himself, who has his haircuts and beard trims booked out for a year in advance. I mean, clockwork, he gets this done. So um, went and talked to, to him about it. He was 100% on board and then, Marcus and I, we got connected and, and had Chris join us and everything. And now Chris sits on the board and it's just been a match made in heaven ever since. Um, and he was originally supposed to join us today, but I um, was feeling a little under the weather. So we thought we'd let, let him rest. But um, so let's talk about Cuts for Kids first, because that's where this, this you know, relationship started. So um, please do tell everyone about the awesome program that you started with Cuts for Kids. Okay, well, Cuts for Kids got started because I personally don't see why we can't all be as fresh and clean as Chris Hicks. <laughs> <I mean, laughs> if we all look like him, we, we look like a million bucks, right? So, no, but seriously, seriously, so I'm sure you've seen these 
programs around back to school time when you have these civic groups and churches and organizations in the community. And so they'll give out free backpacks with school supplies and they'll have like bouncy houses and face paintings and things like that. And then they'll, sometimes they'll also give out free haircuts to the kids uh, who are going back to school. And so when I saw that happening, I thought, you know, that's a great thing, but kids hair grows all year round. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's great to give them that help so that they can start the school year right. But I thought, what if we start a program where we could give them that kind of help all, all uh, year long? And particularly to help families who can't afford regular grooming. So that was where the idea for the Cuts for Kids program came from. We actually give kids free haircuts all year, usually for families who are um, from underprivileged backgrounds who can't afford regular grooming. And so that way the kids can have regular um, haircuts. They can have higher self-esteem. We've, we've researched studies that show there's a direct link between positive body image and higher self-esteem and then ultimate social outcomes. So the kids with higher self-esteem do better in school. They do better in interpersonal relationships, different places where you see improvement. So that's the main goal of the Custer Kids program to help boost social outcomes by giving them um, regular haircuts. And we actually started that last year and we launched it in May of last year, and we were able to enroll 204 kids in the first year in the program. So, so far, um, we were able to serve that many last year. Our goal for this year was 1,000, and we were actually pretty close to that goal on track until this thing called coronavirus hit. <laughs> so, with the barbershops forced to shut down, we had to suspend it for a while. But thankfully, they're reopening, and so we're getting back to it, and we're looking That's forward to it. That's good, yeah. I I feel I've had this conversation recently with someone that everything moving forward is going to be, this is going to be such a, you know, a mile marker in history with pre-pandemic, post-pandemic and the way that things were. Or remember back before COVID, <laughs> what, you know, so that's, that's yeah. how, so it's funny you said that, you know, then this little thing called COVID hit. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, so such a, a great program and we did, and I hope to be able to do more of these in the future as the community allows, or I mean, as, you know, the pandemic allows, I should say. Um, but we partnered with another um, group of attorneys, the guys at Council Carolina, and they do legal pop-ups for the community. And so there's a parking lot. All they need is a parking lot to park their RV. Um, and so we were able to hopefully get a little bit more awareness for cuts for kids. And it was just such a great time to be able to talk to the community as well as, you know, see the program in action and these kids that were so willing to, so sweet and willing to can I take a picture, you know? <laughs> um, so it was such, such a great program. And um, yeah, so Cuts for Kids, so awesome. Um, and right, the and we've actually enhanced that program a little bit. So now, uh, as of now, we're giving the kids free books when they come get free haircuts to take home. And then we recently partnered with the Cramden Institute, which is a nonprofit in Durham that gives free computers to kids who lack computers at home. And so now all the kids in the Customer Kids program can get free computers through Cramden. So we're- That's absolutely amazing. Yeah, that is so different. awesome. Yeah. Wow. I love hearing stories like that and the expansion of that. So the right. so question goes to what about the ladies? <laughs> because I know aside from, I think one of the kids' moms that was in there, I was the only lady that was in that barbershop. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, it was a lot of fun because we got to talk football and we had just a whole divisional rivalry in there. And that was such a good time. But these ladies got to get their hair done, too. Well, so. you're not the first person to ask. And believe it or not, we were actually in talks with salons to include okay. our young girls right before everything shut down. So we're going to kick those talks back up and try to get girls, too. Awesome. Glad to yeah. hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Cuts for Kids, just one of the many programs. So now let's talk about um, Project Class Act. I got my shirt on. I know that's a relatively new um, organ or program underneath the Marcus Harris umbrella. Um, and obviously, unfortunately, I'm assuming it's been affected with schools having to be closed and stuff a little bit. But so let's talk about because it's I know you guys were just getting underway of like a, adopting a couple of teachers before all this went down. So tell us about Project Class Act. Project Class Act came about because I spent a lot of time visiting schools and working with students, usually with poetry workshops and different things. And I've befriended lots of teachers over the years and heard the stories about how budgets keep getting slashed. And even though they're underpaid, they have to come out of their own pockets to pay for supplies and things for the classrooms. And the financial burden on them is, is getting increasingly heavy. And so wanting to help them out, we started this program called Project Class Act. And through the program, we adopt one teacher every month 
And then we raise funds for that teacher all month long. And then at the end of the month, we give them those funds. We just started it in January of this year and only were able to do a couple of teachers before uh, things uh, shut down. But the teacher who we adopted in January is a second grade teacher, Ms. Javity, uh, at Merrick Moore Elementary in East Durham. And we raised a thousand dollars for her over the course of the month. And she used those funds to buy interactive whiteboard tables for her kids to work on in class. And then they got STEM, Lego STEM sets, um, iPads. They got, uh, uh, we got them a classroom library fully stocked with a hundred different titles. So they put those funds to great use, getting things they wouldn't normally get um, because of the funding situation. So we're happy to see that kind of impact. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see, I mean, I know that you'll do everything you can to continue with that program. And, and I've seen, you know, along the way, you know, different posts and saying that even though schools have been operating remotely, you know, virtually, we're still, you know, carrying this program on. So um, it'll be, it'll be good. I'm sure it'll be good to see what's going to happen, you know, with fall semester and where all of that's going to sit with the school system and hopefully can continue to to really get momentum with that and adopt more teachers. So, which is so cute to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Project Class Act, and then we've got the Christmas Smiles program, which I know just blew up last year because you guys were looking at other areas to be able to take these toys. So let's talk about uh, Christmas Smiles. Yeah, so through the Christmas Smiles Drive, we collect toys and books and games and different gifts all year long. And then at the end of the year, we donate the gifts to kids who are in the emergency shelters at local domestic violence agencies. And so we started with the Durham Crisis Response Center. And then last year, we actually expanded to Interactive Wake County in Raleigh. But we, uh, we just go around collecting toys. I actually went on a, a, a fun shopping spree with my son, Chris, last year. Uh, and we, we captured that on video. And he, he's like the toy expert. So he <laughs> of got course. The, right. <laughs> He's seven, so he got all the perfect toys for the kids. But that's been going on since uh, I actually started that myself in 2016. And then when I started the foundation, I just brought it under the aegis of the foundation, uh, made, made it a program there. That's so fun. I, I know because I think last year, um, you know, you that you had reached out and you were like, I got so many toys. I need to spread the well, you know, the love at, at these different shelters. So that was always love hearing things like that as well. Um, so Christmas Miles, um, the Vigilant Struggle Series. I can't forget that one. I was so honored to be a part of one segment of, uh, several months ago. Um, so expand on the Vigilant Struggle Series. It's so important. Through the Vigilant Struggle Series, we tackle what we feel are important political or cultural issues. And then we invite politicians and community activists and other folks to serve on panels where we can expound on those issues more. And so the one you were part of uh, back in September, was ending the school to prison pipeline. And we were honored to have Mary Ann Black, uh, representative from Durham who recently passed, but she was on the panel with you. And you guys did a great job just talking about the legislation that's being passed to address that, the community efforts are being uh, used to address that. And we had a pretty good attendance and uh, we do that through that series, try to talk about issues like that on a regular basis. And I mean, it's what we're going through right now, nationwide, you know, that kind of thing is even more important than ever. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, I, and I, I will never forget, I don't want to go with too, too sidebar on this, but um, one of the questions that was posed was, you know, what do you think is the first step or how do we get past this or, or how do we start to, to change this and fix this? And my response was, we've got to admit that it's happening first. And even though that was in September, which seems like a while ago, you know, now it's like, okay, we're, we're, there's some momentum that's happening now. We need, we need to take it and we need to continue on with it. So um, starting those conversations and having those conversations, um, sometimes that can be uncomfortable or, you know, gut-wrenching or, or, or just ego checking or whatever it is, but they're so important. So thank you for being, you know, kind of a pioneer in that in our community um, and inviting those conversations to start happening because so that change can start happening too. So such an awesome series too. Um, and then I believe there is a scholarship program that you have as well, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. Let's talk about that one. <laughs> so the scholarship program is actually named after my brother who he passed about 20 years ago, but he was just one of the most incredible people I ever met because he was smart and he was active in the community and he cared about people genuinely. And I got a lot of that from him, his influence over me. And so I wanted to keep his legacy and name alive. And so I started the scholarship program in his name. 
And so through that program, we actually give out scholarships to uh, college students. And we also try to connect them with professional mentors in the fields that they're trying to pursue. So if they want to go into medicine or research, we try to connect them with folks who are already in those fields to give them some career guidance and academic assistance. Uh, and so we're trying to raise funding for that program so we can increase the amount of the scholarship awards as well as the number we give out uh, every year. Awesome. You just got so many different arms out there in the community, just <laughs> making such a difference and such amazing change. And um, I love you for it. It's awesome. So <laughs> have I missed any current programs? Not any current programs. All right, so let's let's hear about the teaser that you were talking about right as we were getting started that you were talking about a new program and expanding because like I said, when we first met and talked, you were primarily, I would say, and I'm not going to say exclusively, but you know in the in the Durham community. Um, and now that's not the case. So deliver that little little bit of <laughs> that little knowledge nugget for us. <laughs> Well, one of the issues that I'm very passionate about is fighting food insecurity. Uh, and I'm a volunteer with Meals on Wheels. I have been for five years helping to make sure seniors get uh, healthy food on a regular basis. And so to help us do that through the foundation, we are actually starting a charity food truck service that we hope to have on the road by this Thanksgiving in time for the holidays. And the principle behind the food truck is to take free healthy hot meals and grocery bundles that have fresh produce and other uh, healthy items in them and give them to people who are in neighborhoods that have been deemed most food insecure. So our focus to start is going to be in the Southeast Raleigh area, particularly the area directly Southeast of downtown. And we've gotten some great help. We've talked to folks from Southeast Raleigh Promise. We talked to uh, people who are at Meals on Wheels, Wake County. We got help from uh, the NC Cooperative Extension and Wake County Human Services. I mean, all of them just have done so much to help us. We really appreciate it. But our goal is to give out at least 20 to 30,000 free meals in the first year and then try to expand it from there. So awesome. I love to hear that. I mean, you're just doing such great things. Like, do you sleep? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I Can you not so. tell? It doesn't sound like it. <laughs> because you still got your, what, who I call mini Marcus. You still yeah. got Mini Marcus that you know that, that tagged around, and I love seeing him as part of all of this as well. So um, same back yeah. to Chris, but <laughs> I call him Mini Marcus. Um, well, thank you so much, Marcus, for you know just your vision and for the community, the programs that you you know already established and continue to expand and create, and just that philanthropic heart. I mean, it shines through and through, and you are such a need. And a, and a beacon of light and hope for the community. And so I just thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. And I know that we as a firm are so honored to be able to be part of the Marcus Harris Foundation. Um, and Chris loves it, even though he couldn't be here. Um, he loves, you know, being a part of the board and, you know, really being a part of something that's making a difference and is so necessary. So I just, I can't thank you enough for all of the hard work that you're doing. Well, we appreciate all you guys support. It means a lot to us. Absolutely. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time because I know that you are a busy man. So <laughs> anything else that you'd like to say, any closing remarks or anything um, as we wrap up? Uh, just that I really appreciate you guys because we're not the only organization you guys support. I mean, you also help out with Note in the Pocket. You guys support the Women's Center. And so we really appreciate your philanthropic heart and all the help that you guys give the various individuals and communities in the, uh, in the neighborhood. So we thank you guys for that. Well, thank you. Um, and if somebody is interested in volunteering or donating or finding out more information about the Marcus Harris Foundation, where should they go to find out that information or contact? Best place is our website, which is MarcusHarrisFoundation.org. And the different tabs at the top can lead you any direction you want to go. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join me. I hope you have a good rest of your Friday and weekend. And hopefully we will be able to see each other in person soon. Um, but until then, please don't ever hesitate to reach out for those of you watching. If you're interested, if you've been looking for somewhere to get involved, um, don't know where to start, the Marcus Harris Foundation might be a great place for you to learn more and to get involved um, and active in your community. So again, Marcus, thank you so much for those watching. Thank you for tuning in and we will see you next time.